Hey everyone, welcome back to Reading with Tatiana. I'm doing my wrap up of my August reads and this month I got to read five books and they were all pretty great reads. I kind of decided to read more books that were trendy or hype in the past few years and it's been a fun month. So thank you for watching and again if you like my content please watch, uh, hit the subscribe button. If you like this video give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you've read any of these books. The first book I read in August is The Barren Grounds by David A. Robertson. I gave this book a 3 out of 5 and it's actually the first book of a trilogy. The third book actually just came out recently and I'm starting the second book so I'm kind of fun to read this new series. The reason why I gave this book a 3 out of 5 is because I think it's definitely targeted towards a younger range, probably preteen or someone that's gone through a foster system or also indigenous youth. So I just felt like it wasn't a target audience, however I still enjoy it and gave it a solid 3. So what the story is, is we meet Morgan and Eli who are both indigenous, they're 11 and 12, and they are from two different families but they're right now in the same foster home. One day they find a portal to the barren grounds and they meet Ochek, which means fisher, and Eric, which means squirrel in indigenous language. And they go on a journey to return the green time to the white time. And in doing so, they have to face the man. And the man is a selfish human who has taken the green time from the white time. So the white time is now in the permanent winter. So this book, I would say, is great because I think it's a new modern day type of Narnia. And, you know, there's a portal, they go in, and it's a bit of adventure. And it's just like a really fun read. So if you're into Narnia and also like a trilogy series, this book's definitely for you. The next book I read is Elliot Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman and I gave this book a 5 out of 5. This book is told in third person from Eleanor and she is just someone that works in the office in the accounts receivable and it's very clear she's a person of routine and she doesn't like a lot of change. But then one day she meets a musician at a show and she becomes completely enamored and this is her first sign in her life that she's like I'm meant to be of this person. So she decides to slowly change herself to seem attractive to this uh, attractive to this man, uh, first physically, and over this time she we as she goes goes through this journey of changing herself, we come to learn through her perspective that she is a bit strange. You know, she doesn't actually talk to anyone outside of work. She seems to have a drinking problem, and she doesn't really catch social cues. So over the course of this uh, series of uh, I guess events. She actually befriends a coworker, Raymond, and without spoiling the book too much, she basically learns what it's like to make her first friend ever at the age of 30 and what's it like to be normal in society. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 because it was a new way of seeing society and how hard it can be for someone that maybe had trauma when they're young and not knowing how to navigate society. So this book was funny and it was easy to read and it was fun and quirky and I really enjoyed it. The next book I read is Local Women Missing by Mary Kubica. I gave it a 5 out of 5. And this is a thriller, so I won't talk too much about it, except for 11 years ago, a woman goes missing late at night while she's on the run. A week later, in the same neighborhood, a other woman and her daughter also goes missing. And now we fast forward to present day, and the daughter who's missing with the mother, 11 years later, comes out. And it's like, what happened? And it turns out that she was locked in a basement for 11 years. So I don't, again, I don't want to spoil the book too much because it's a really good thriller. But this book literally went from zero to 100 miles per hour within the first chapter. And it was such a great read. And I read this book on the bus one day and a stranger came up to me and said this book was really good. And you know what? It was really good. So if you like a thriller, you like a quick read, uh, this book is definitely for you. I gave an easy 5 out of 5. The next book I read is The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi. I gave it a 4 out of 5. This book is also part of a trilogy and this is the first book. So we meet Lakshmi who fled an abusive arranged marriage in rural India. And when, they sh when she flees this abuse uh, abusive arranged marriage, she goes to Jaipur where she makes a name for herself amongst the rich as a henna artist for them. And she works really hard to be successful, to make money, and she wants to build a house where she can take her parents from the rural countryside to Jaipur. But one day, her ex-husband comes from the countryside to Jaipur and also brings a sister that she never knew she had. And she basically, her whole world turns upside down. She finds out that her parents have died. She has a sister and she has to navigate, you know, is it really about being successful or is it more about being there for your family? So it's a very interesting book because you see a clash of old versus new India because this book is set during 
uh, the independence of India in the 1960s. And we also see the clash of like living for yourself and living for your family. I, um, I didn't give us a, a, four, a 505 because something was missing for me. I think maybe because the ending just wrapped up too perfectly. However, I really like the commentary of what India was like during its independence from, Br from Britain in the 60s. And the last and fifth book I read in August is Where the Crawl That Same by Delia Owens. I gave this book a 4 out of 5. I feel like I don't have to talk about this book too much because it's been so trendy for the past four years that it's been out. But basically, we it's set in the 1950s and 60s in North Carolina. And we meet Kay, who is a marsh girl, uh, considered a marsh girl by the town folks. And as a marsh girl, she is seen as feral because she can't read and she's been abandoned by her parents and her siblings. But in, over time, uh, she, we, she has kind of like romantic connections with a boy from the town. And then also um, 11, uh, in present day or 11 years later, I guess, in the 60s, uh, the, the former star quarterback, uh, uh, Chase Andrews, is found dead. And people suspect that Kai, the marsh girl, is a suspect. So this is a mystery. And because of the time period set, we see a lot of social commentary on colored people versus white people, marsh people versus town people, and men versus women. I don't want to get into it too much just because I don't want spoilers, but this book is definitely worth reading. Um, the only reason I gave it a 4 out of 5 is because the last two pages literally made it go from a 5 to a 4 because I felt the author did something to the protagonist that seemed so out of character, and I spent so much time investing in the story for it to totally be pushed in my face in the last two pages and I just didn't enjoy that. Um, so if you read this book, I really would love to hear what you thought about the ending because for me, I was like, nah, not into that at all. Thank you for watching until the end of my video. I hope you had a great month of reading for August. If you've read any of these books that I mentioned earlier, I'd love to hear what you thought down below and happy month of reading for September. Bye!